The world famous San Diego Zoo has a new exhibit showing us how climate change is affecting some of the world's most beautiful animals. Senior keeper Rick Schwartz has brought some of the cute critters this morning with us. Hi, Rick. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having us. Good morning, Mr. Fox or Miss Fox. This Miss Fox. Ms. This is Tundra. Fox. She's and an she, Arctic fox, right? Yeah. She's a five-year-old Arctic fox, and uh, our she's our poor, yeah, she's a little nervous Aww. with the lights and everything, but she's. She's also comfortable in the arms like this. This is not absolutely, you know, something that would be a pet by any means, but something that is uh, an animal that's been hand raised and worked with by professionals. This so. is an animal that thrives in frigid temperatures, hence the name. Yes. How is this animal uh, well, in danger now? Well, the problem that we're having up in the north, mainly with the polar bears, uh, there's not enough ice forming up there, so the time for them to hunt for their food is being diminished. Mm. The the Arctic fox can rely on other food sources during the summer months, but during the winter months, they follow polar bears around. Uh, anybody who's seen any footage of polar bears in the wild, we always see Arctic foxes chasing after them to, f to get all the scraps, basically the leftover food. So there's a very important relationship there with that. The polar bears can't hunt, bring food out in the wintertime for the Arctic fox. We're going to see them probably either their numbers decreasing also or possibly moving south, interfering with other species that would rely on the food right, that they would be right. using. So everything is connected, and it's, it's kind of an interesting uh, effect that's occurring up there. Important education. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you so much. We want to bring out our next guest, okay. a Canadian lynx. Tell us about the lynx. Well, you'll notice when the lynx comes out, if you grab your paperwork, oh, he's sure. going to land right here. Oh, my. He's a big fellow. <laughs> yeah, Woo, this is hello. Ace. And he is a, a Canadian Can I touch lynx. Him? Actually, he's a non-petting. He's okay. best for looking at, but not asked. for petting. Yes, Glad exactly. Now you can notice the lynx is, is classic with the short tail and the tufts on the ears there, and that this includes a caracal and the bobcat also in the lynx family. And the oh, bobcat gets the name from the bobtail. Exactly. You might get a chance this paw right up front here if you get a close shot of that. Well, that's you see a big paw. how big. Yes. Why? And this is a full-grown male. This is as big as he's going to get. He's not going to grow into those feet. Those feet are very important for grabbing onto their prey items. Uh. They'll lay and wait patiently behind a tree or in some shrubs. They'll hunt very fast animals, smaller mammals like rabbits. So those broad feet, very important for getting that grip and running in snow too. What's the problem the Canadian lynx is running well, into? Well, Canadian, Canadian lynx right now, their numbers are stable. But again, this is something we can foresee as we start to see the beginning of the chain with the yep. polar bear and things up north changing, climate's changing. Again, it's going to start It'll affecting everything gets them. affected. This species right now can be found uh, throughout Canada, around mm -hmm. the Hudson Bay, then on down the Rockies into, into New Mexico. And they're doing quite well right now for themselves as long as there's habitat that's there to sustain them. All right, let's bring out uh, another animal that, that isn't doing quite we'll as well, unfortunately. You have a couple of tortoises. Yes, yes. I've got... These are, these are pettable. These are pettable, yes. <laughs> yeah, much better. Now, you look at these, and a lot of people, oh, I see these in the pet store all the time. What's yeah. the big deal? These are critically endangered species. When an animal hits critically endangered, all the bells and whistles and red lights go off. What's Why is happening? It critically endangered? Well, there's two things. We have the Madagascar spider tortoise. It gets its name from the nice spider pattern. Beautiful. All over his back. Beautiful. And the Burmese star tortoise right there. Both of these animals are uh, traded illegally for the pet trade. So there's a lot of money to be made by the locals for gathering these tortoises from the wild environment. And then also, especially this little guy here is just starting to book around. They're losing a lot of habitat. Madagascar mm -hmm. and, and several of our rainforest areas are really in a lot of trouble because the habitat is being taken for other things, uh, whether it's just a one-time harvest only for mm -hmm. plant materials, etc. And these are herbivores. They rely heavily on plants and insects. And we don't think about it sometimes, how affecting one thing can affect everything, but it really will make a difference. Mm. These are still young, right? How, yes. How big will they get? This one is six years old. He's just about full grown, believe it or not. And this one's only two. He'll get a little bit bigger, a little bit taller, a little bit wider. Uh, both are, like I said, though, herbivores that live in a somewhat temperate uh, and somewhat dry forest. It's kind of neat in the summertime when it gets really hot. Mm -hmm. you know, we think of hibernation as something goes down and burrows down to stay yeah. warm in the winter. Oh, well, they do a type of hibernation, if you will. It's not called hibernation, Inside but their shell? well, they will burrow <laughs> down to stay cool in the summer. In the hot, dry parts of the summer, oh. they actually go into a torpor where they shut down their body a little bit and can hang out for a few months without any food or water. Summer hibernation. How long do exactly. they live? Well, they'll live easily, uh, you know, 30, 40 years oh. or more. There's not much known about their longevity in the wild because they are taken so early from the wild for oh. other uses. So it's it's unfortunate. All right, thank you. And finally, finally, Harry's best friend. Harry's Mr. best friend, and she'll be yours too. This is Isana. And she is a prehensile tailed porcupine. Prehensile tailed? Yes. That what name, does that mean? Well, prehensile is simply a fancy word for grasping. We always tell kids ah. when they come to visit the zoo, tell all your friends you have prehensile hands. Which it means just means grasping. Grasping. But you don't prehensile. want to tell your friends that they have prehensile hands because that way, you know, you're special because you, okay. you know what that means. Learned but you something. can see here with her tail, no quills on the tail, a little like, bit of bristly can't see hair. It. Oh. Show, let's show the tail. Get the shot here. There you go. See that? So you can see she wraps around my finger here. Uh huh. 
And that's, that allows them to do a lot of climbing. They're strictly a tree-dwelling animal. They will come down for um, going from one tree to another tree, uh, but that's too dangerous for them. So they would rather stay up in the trees. You can see these quills. And there's a big myth about quills, yeah. that they can shoot their quills. They cannot. It's, uh, they're okay. barbed, so they go into the animal that actually is trying to get them, and they come out All automatically. All right. Thanks, Rick. I'm sorry. we got to leave it that's there. That's all right. That's all right. Thanks the... for having us.